In this Lost Art Getting Started Guide, I'm going to talk about where you should go and what you should do first after choosing your class and customizing your character. The start of the game can be very confusing, especially for new players because of the numerous features available. If you've just started or are about to begin your journey but don't know what to do first, then this Lost Art Guide is for you. In our previous Lost Art Character Creation Guide, we talked about the number of character slots available on a single account and how to avail more of these, an overview of each of the 15 classes, and the various customizations that you could do to make your characters look as unique as possible. In this Lost Art Getting Started Guide, our goal is to narrow down the activities and gameplay mechanics you'll be focusing on at the very beginning of the game. Whether you intend to power level to 60 as soon as possible, or if you'd like to understand how combat and trade skills work, then we've got you covered. Let's begin by going through the ways of leveling up quickly. Given the volume of distinct quest types available in Lost Ark, knowing the ones that provide the most number of experience points is crucial. If you'd rather skip the lore altogether to hit max level, then you'll have to prioritize main story quests which are identified as detailed orange icons. You immediately start one right after the prologue. Note that similar to closed beta, you'll start the game at level 10 with the advanced class of your choice. Alongside these are side or common quests with yellow icons that look like the less detailed versions of the main story quests. They are general quests which provide more background on the NPCs in certain areas. There are also sudden or emergency quests that require you to kill enemies in zones. The problem with side quests, however, is they don't provide you with as many experience points, even if some of them can be done with the main story quests. As such, it will be better to revisit them at a later time instead. The other pertinent quests that you should take are adventure or guide quests and chain quests. Guide quests are purple colored quests which give you tutorials on specific activities and features in Lost Ark. In particular, you need to obtain the learning about pets and better together quests. This lets you learn more about pets while taking care of them. Pets help improve your performance in combat. They'll also automatically loot all of the items on the ground after an encounter or when you unlock treasure chests. They can even remove the teleportation fee that you would usually spend when traveling via triports. On the other hand, chain quests are yellow chain quests that offer additional stat and skill potions and valuable rewards like silver. You can do them with main story quests since they are also located in the same area. When you unlock the sailing mechanic at around level 35, the main story quest icon will change into a blue-green world quest icon. This means that you have to set sail and visit other islands of Arkesia to proceed in the main quest line. Unlike other MMOs like Elder Scrolls Online, you don't have to worry about dailies and weeklies yet since these unlock at level 50. When you're leveling up, remember to access your roster information by pressing O to claim rewards such as permanent stat bonuses. Although these aren't build defining, they eventually accumulate to help make your character more powerful later on. When you arrive in Pride Home, you have to complete the Town Where Light Lingers quest to receive your very first mount. Afterward, remember to place the corresponding icon onto your hotbar so you can easily summon it when you need to. Mounts allow you to quickly traverse from one area to the next. With the Auto Move functionality, which is activated upon pressing T, you can multitask by gearing up and allocating skill points. To gallop further by jumping, hit the spacebar from time to time. It's worth noting that you can gain access to better mounts to hasten your movement speed. You're able to access them after completing a specific percentage of the Adventurer's Tome, which you can check by hitting N. This is a book that shows you how much of the continent's features or activities you've completed. For example, your completion percentage of East Lutera increases when you reveal a vista and finish a dungeon like Stormcry Grotto. When you move from one town to the next, as is often the case in Lost Ark, you'll need to travel via Triport, which are teleportation hubs. Note that you don't have to go to a Triport in order to travel to another Triport. Wherever you are on the map, as long as you've discovered the triport you're about to head to, you're all set. Simply select it, and then spend some silver. Last but not least is the sheet music, which you obtain from completing specific quests. For instance, the Song of Escape from the Legends and Fairy Tales main quest lets you quickly exit dungeons after completing them to teleport back to the area you were previously. Meanwhile, the Song of Return from the quest with the same name allows you to go back to Lutera Castle without having to spend silver, whereas the Song of Crixian summons you back with Beatrice to test your character's capabilities. Like mounts, make sure to add these to your hotbar for easy access. Combat skills in Lost Ark work differently compared to ones in like ESO. Rather than equipping and actively using these skills to level them up, you'll gain a pool of points. This allows you to invest in any of the skills you want to use without any restrictions. Additionally, combat skills are much more nuanced than they initially appear to be. At levels 4, 7, and 10, you'll be able to specialize further by choosing from several options per upgrade tier to grant additional bonuses in combat. This is also known as the Tripod System. Let's say you're a Shadow Hunter and you have enough points to maximize your Demonic Clone skill. At skill level 7, you can choose from one of the three Tripods, particularly Chain Attack to attack horizontally once more, Pack with the Devil to summon a Demon to fight alongside you, or Fist of Destruction to boost damage in human form. The same is true when you reach Demonic Clone skills level 4 and 10. 
What makes the combat skills in Tripod system highly flexible is the fact that you can easily respect the skill point allocation in either of them whenever you want at no cost. Furthermore, you can save skill presets or loadouts, which lets you freely switch from one build to the next. When you're leveling up to 60, you don't have to worry about skills and tripods you should prioritize. Instead, try out each of them and see what works best for your playstyle. In addition to combat skills, you also gain access to life or trade skills by completing guide quests such as mining. Trade skills are used to gather materials to craft items and consumables at the cost of expending a limited resource known as work energy, which is account-based. If this becomes too low, you have to wait for a couple of days before you continue using a particular trade skill. Progressing these skills takes a long time to do, so it's better to get started with it while you're leveling up. Doing so prevents you from backtracking after you've reached max level. To level up your trade skills by gathering materials, you need trade skill tools which degrade over time. So instead of repairing low rank tools by spending silver, thereby reducing your maximum durability, you can opt to purchase new ones. For rarer tools, it's better to sharpen them with crystals rather than replace them altogether. Trade skill tools provide buffs such as improved gathering speed and the acquisition of better resources, even if your trade skills rank is low. The six trade skills in Lost Ark are Foraging, which is focused on gathering plants and flowers to craft potions, Logging, focused on cutting down trees to gain wood to improve your stronghold, Mining, which focuses on mining ore to craft weapons and bombs, Hunting, which focuses on gathering animal parts to cook food, Fishing, which focuses on acquiring fish to cook food, and Excavating, which focuses on unearthing relics. Upon completing quests, you'll accumulate two types of healing potions, those that restore a set amount of HP, and those that regenerate a specific percentage of HP instead. It's important to stock up on both of them to help you survive tougher encounters. Between these two potions, avoid using the ones that restore a percentage of your HP, as you'll need them for endgame content. Specifically, you'll use them in high-level dungeons and raids since they scale to your level. You do have other options to revive on the spot, and that is by using Phoenix Plumes, which are a limited resource. I wouldn't recommend using them at this stage in the game since they're difficult to obtain later on. They're also part of the Adventurer's Tome reward pack when you finish a certain percentage of what the continent has to offer. Normal dungeon quests are those you can complete solo and rather quickly. However, some dungeons such as Morai Ruins take longer to complete, which means that if you're doing it alone and no one can revive you should you die, then you have to start from the very beginning. Plus, your equipment will continue to degrade every time you perish. Since we're also on the subject of dungeons, you should refrain from killing all of the enemies that you encounter. You don't have to eliminate them to progress except in the cases where they block your path. Not only will you improve your survivability by steering clear of engaging in combat, but you also save time by finishing these dungeon quests as quickly as possible. With all the leveling that's been going on, you're probably wondering how your gear fits into the equation. What's essential is to remember that from levels 10 to 60, you shouldn't worry about this since you'll be swapping gear every two or three levels anyway. But it's also good to know how each piece of equipment works to better prepare you for endgame content. In total, all of the gear you equip should provide you with a cumulative gear score. By the time you hit level 50, you can expect to have a gear score of at least 250. Keep in mind that at end game, the higher your gear score is, the more content you unlock. Every piece of equipment contributes to the overall combat effectiveness of your character. Some improve stats such as strength and dexterity, where others grant permanent bonuses. In particular, weapons and armor enhance basic stats like strength, vitality, weapon power, and defense, while accessories such as necklaces, earrings, and rings provide you with bonus combat stats like specialization and crit. Furthermore, every advanced class can only wield one weapon type. So if you're a shadow hunter, for example, you won't be able to wield a holy book to gain access to other skills. You'll instead stick with using double blades. By the time you reach Lutera Castle at around level 26, you'll be able to enhance accessories via engraving. Engravings are further divided into two categories, one for your class, which would determine the playstyles you wish to adopt, and one for combat. For instance, with the Shadow Hunter, you can choose to focus on Demonic Impulse playstyle to improve the damage you deal in your demonic form, or you can go for Perfect Suppression to maximize your capabilities as a human. Combat engravings, on the other hand, are other powerful special effects that further enhance stats, damage, and abilities. At this stage of Lost Ark, you don't have to invest in engravings, but like with gear, it's best to know how they work and what you can do about these while you find them when leveling up. Engravings are obtained from accessories and ability stones, so make sure to save them for later. As you'll notice, there are three levels for every engraving, whether it relates to ambush damage or max MP. To unlock special effects in levels 1, 2, and 3, you need to accrue points at increments of 5 by equipping several accessories with engravings on them. For example, for shield piercing, if you were to equip two rings with a total of plus 4 towards the engraving and an earring with plus 1 point, then you'd be able to activate its level 1 effect. In general, you need to have a total of 5 points for each level before you can take advantage of the engraving itself. Ability stones, which only occupy one gear slot, will only provide you with engraving points after you have faceted or cut them. Be sure to complete the Faceting Ability Stones Guide quest to learn how. 
Furthermore, they also feature negative engravings, which work in the same way as normal engravings we've discussed, so be careful in accruing too many points for these. Right after reaching Lutera Castle, you receive the Stronghold Ceremony Quest to gain access to your Stronghold, which is Lost Ark's housing feature. To be able to teleport here quickly, you simply have to play the Song of Hearth and Home that you learn by completing the same quest. Strongholds not only allow you to customize and decorate structures, but I also grant boosts, discounts, and resources to upgrade gear. For instance, with improved welfare, you'll be able to reduce the consumption of action energy when performing stronghold-related activities. Similar to trade skills, action energy is replenished over time. The maximum action energy cap is approximately 15,000, which you can't go beyond. So be sure to constantly check your facilities to see if there are activities that you can research or perform for the day to have them ready by the time you reach endgame. The following five stronghold facilities should be upgraded since it takes a very long time to complete. These include the following. The lab, used for research to unlock features like upgrades and crafting recipes. The crafting workshop, used to craft battle items like potions, bombs, and food, the resources of which are gathered via trade skills. Here you can also make trade skill tools and stronghold furnishings. Station, used to send sailors and pets on special missions to obtain valuable resources, much like the Meowcenaries in Monster Hunter Rise. Training camp, used to passively train alternate characters. However, you must go beyond the max level before using this facility. Manor, used to build structures which grant bonuses like reduced action energy cost and crafting time. At level 35, you'll receive the Set Sail quest, which will give you a tutorial about sailing. Sailing allows you to reach other islands of Arkesia since you wouldn't be able to teleport to them using the Triport. There are a lot of various activities that you can engage in as you sail the Seven Seas until you complete the main story or world quests. For instance, you'll be managing a crew of sailors by assigning them tasks, which they are capable of doing because of the unique abilities they have. While you're sailing, it's important to keep track of your ship's HP and ship durability. Having to repair a highly damaged ship will cost you a lot of resources, so you should keep it well maintained. You should consider unlocking better ships and upgrading them thereafter to maximize your sailing efficiency. Moreover, other activities require you to spend luck points. These include fishing, which you should do regardless in order to level up the corresponding trade skill, hunting treasure chests, and recovering floating cargo. Doing so will grant rewards like pirate coins. You can use this to recruit more crew members and upgrade your ship. Creating alternate characters in Lost Ark isn't absolutely necessary unless you intend to maximize the resources and currency, such as gold, that you get from your main character in a shorter time frame. Having two to three alt characters will help you complete more dailies and weeklies for extra rewards, which you can then funnel into crafting gear that your main character needs, since you won't be able to transfer equipment. As such, you're likely to avoid spending real money to further progress in the game. Dailies and weeklies are activities such as Chaos Dungeons and Abyss Raids, to name a few. There's also a rest bonus system, which helps you stay on top of these daily quests. This incentivizes you to continue playing even if you can't log in every day. So if you miss out on doing daily quests such as Chaos Dungeons, Eponas, and Guardian Raids, half of the rewards you should have received will then be converted to twice the loot when you do engage in those activities. In essence, you can still catch up on endgame content regardless of whether or not you're a hardcore player. That wraps up our Lost Ark Getting Started Guide. What did you think of it? Are you playing Lost Ark on the first day of launch? Let us know in the comments below.